Hi everyone, welcome to today's lecture. And today we'll be dealing with a topic of paper, uh, GS paper three, economy, that is economy. And the name of the topic is national monetization pipeline. A very, very important topic has been mentioned in last year's budget as well. See, the uh, infrastructure for any economy, the importance of infrastructure is exceptionally wide range for any economy because it helps to boost the economy. In the same line, we are going to understand this really important topic, National Monetization Pipeline and its importance. Like always, I'll be dividing today's lecture into some subparts. The first would be the context. We'll be understanding as to why are we reading it and why is it important for our examination perspective. Then we'll understand the entire uh, definition or the definitions. We'll understand certain definitions of National Monetization pipeline, the core assets and everything, we'll understand all of it. Then we'll understand the benefits of it, then certain challenges, and at last way forward or the, can, we'll end the class with a conclusion, right? First thing first, why are we reading it? What is the context of this particular issue? So recently, it was in news, and you all must have heard of this as well, that National Monetization Pipeline was launched. And why it was launched, what was the purpose of it? Why it was launched? It was basically to aggregate or to collect 6 lakh crore rupees through what? Through leasing out. Remember, this word is really important here, leasing out. Leasing out what? The core assets of the central government. Remember, government, the central government is not giving the ownership right of its assets to the, uh, to the other players, especially the private players, but it is just leasing out some of its core assets to the private players so that it can aggregate this much amount of money from those assets, right? This is the first thing you need to remember that the government is not giving ownership right. So, lease out karna kisi cheez ko or ownership right dena, these are the two different things and government here is going only giving the, only giving certain rights, no the ownership rights. Okay, and how much they are going to collect uh, from these, uh, from this monetization pipeline, 6 lakh crore, this was, this is the target, okay, and uh, yeah, and then what, what are they going to do and what are those core assets, jo ye core assets se paisa Ikhatta karne wali hai government. What are those core assets? Those assets are roads, railways, power, oil, gas, pipelines, telecom industry, civil aviation. Maybe they are going to uh, give certain uh, projects on lease so that they can collect the money from their shipping ports, waterways, mining, food, and uh, public distribution, coal sector, maybe housing and urban affairs, maybe and the stadiums and sport complexes also. And these are some of the factors, uh, uh, some of the sectors over a period of 2022 se leke 2025 tak they will be collecting this much from the core assets and i've told you what are the core assets known core assets bhi hote like for example land buildings wagera ye known core assets hote hain but these are the categories of core assets which government will be leasing and will be aggregating or will be connected collecting this much of money through leasing out these uh, assets right now, up next, we have that how much money is going to come from which sector. This is just a normal thing. You just, I just want you to have a glimpse of it. There's nothing for you to understand over this. Just, just a glimpse of it. The roads say we are going to collect this much, then from telecom this much, and from all these sectors or all these core sectors, the government is going to collect money as the government will be leasing out these some of these sectors to the private players right up next we have the framework now what is the framework and what is the entire thing what is the framework in which we have designed this national monetization plan or the or the scheme so the first is monetization of rights and note ownership i think i have made this point very clear that these are just the rights of the uh, these are just the normal rights or these are just the leasing rights, not the ownership rights. So you need to understand this point that privatization is not happening here. Right? 
people might confuse this with privatization but nothing sort of that is happening here theek hai only leasing out of things are happening here not the privatization right next is brownfield uh projects may be they are going to whatever they are going to collect they are going to invest into brown, brownfield projects also see there are two kind of projects the brownfield or brownfield and the greenfield i think this is pretty much clear with the name itself greenfield is something where no initial investment or you know uh koi bhi चीज है कोई भी डेवलपमेंट नहीं हो चुका है वी विल बी डूइंग थिंग्स फ्रॉम दिस स्क्रैच दिस इज व्हाट द ग्रीन फील्ड प्रोजेक्ट्स आर ऑन द अनदर हैंड ब्राउन फील्ड प्रोजेक्ट्स आर दोज प्रोजेक्ट्स वेयर द इन्वेस्टमेंट और सम काइंड ऑफ वर्क हैज बीन डन ऑलरेडी एंड वी आर जस्ट डूइंग इट और वी आर जस्ट इन्वेस्टिंग इन इट टू अपग्रेड द थिंग्स राइट दिस इज द मेजर डिफरेंस बिटवीन ब्राउन एंड ग्रीन एंड वी विल बी इन्वेस्टिंग इन टू प्रोजेक्ट्स एज वेल दिस इज वॉट दी वन ऑफ द फ्रेम ऑफ द पाइपलाइन second uh, third framework is structured partnership under defined contractual framework with strict key performance indicator which is kpis key performance indicators and performance standards now what is structured partnership for this you need to understand there are two monetization models right there are two monetization models and how we monetize it or what are those two models the first is the the first model i am so sorry for this just just a second the two models we were talking about right so the first model is direct contractual approach and the second is which we have just spoken about structured partnership structured partnership kindly pay attention here what are direct contractual approach uh, what is direct contractual approach and what are what are standard uh, partnerships what happens in direct contractual approach this is a monetization model wherein we uh, collect money from so what happens in this there is a direct contract between a private party and a public party in terms of the infrastructure investments right on the another hand what happens in structured partnership so this is basically a long term a uh, long term kind of uh, investment wherein a pool of investors come in together and they uh, do it for long term so what we are planning for this pipeline we are planning a structured pipeline wherein a pool of investors will come in together to generate a long term fund so this is more about long term fund theek okay? hai and national monetization pipeline is concerned with the strategic partnership uh, structured partnership only right up next we have what is the potential of it yes we have planned this this particular thing but what is the potential of this it holds a huge potential i'll tell you how because this this national monetization pipeline over to a, a period of 2022 to 25 is indicatively valued at we have read this key we are going to collect we are going to aggregate 6.0 that is 6 lakh crore out of it which is jo ki national infrastructure pipeline ke ka 14% hai ठीक है, so we are going to uh, collect enough money from it, and we can invest that money into green fields and brown field projects, so that at least they can prosperous. All right, next is the top five sectors capture eighty three percent of aggregate pipeline value. Like for example, road से सबसे ज़्यादा पैसा हमारे पास आने वाला है from the road sector. Followed by railway sector, then power, and then all these sectors. You just need to remember the initial two. no need to remember the whole category or the whole list just remember the initial two ki roads stands first and then railways comes the ne next third is in terms of phasing out of value also 15% jo assets hai with an indicative value of this much crore 
our NVS has to be rolled out in the current financial year 2021 and 2022 only. Okay, we have target for each and every year that this much crore we are going to collect from this year and then followed with by the next year. So we are targeting 0.88 lakh crore for this year for the year 2021 and 2022. Moving ahead, though we are doing this, uh, uh, we are doing this national monetization pipeline thing. But what is why is it required? Why are we doing this? What is the necessity of this? Let's read this out. Okay. First, it says ki there is a huge potential. We all know there's a huge potential in the private sector, both in terms of the efficiency, in terms of the credibility it has, in th terms of the work they do. So even Niti Aayog is in favor of this, that this, that, uh, that this uh, monetization program is going to unlock the value of investments in the public sector assets by what? By tapping the private sector capital and their efficiencies, their credibility, their technology, their work, basically. Okay? So we are going to tap the private sector ka capital as well as their whatever uh, uh, the, uh, the positives they have. Okay. Next is, this also advocates unlocking the capital from non-strategic or yeah, underperforming government-owned assets, which underperform. There are certain assets which underperform kar rahe hai, so that so we can really unlock capital from those sectors and we can put that investment at, cert, at some you know some some sectors which are performing well or which have the capacity or potential to perform well so we can definitely switch to this it will boost the economy definitely it will create more employment opportunity and will create the com competitiveness of indian economy apart from this india needs to invest about 1.5 trillion on infrastructure development in order to aspire to become 5 trillion economy. If you remember, this was a very talked topic because in 2019, I guess, our, our, our Prime Minister announced this, that we will be 5 trillion economy by 2024 and 2025. So in order to achieve this dream, we need to invest more and more into infrastructural projects. And this is one of the steps we took to achieve this target of becoming a 5 trillion economy by 2025, right? Moving ahead, why public sector undertakings are underperforming in India? Why PSU or the public sector is underperforming? This is again a major question for our country. This is not just a topic to be prepared for our prelims or for our mains examination, but also is a question, is a a uh, matter which should be addressed at a national level that why PSUs are underperforming. Why do we even, why do we need such private projects only? Why are we collecting such, uh, such, such projects only? Why are we taking help from private players only? I am not saying that there should be this PPT model and there should be these things. There should be the involvement of private sectors. But why PSUs are underperforming? This is a grave, uh, you know, a question which should be addressed and which should be uh, actually solved. Okay, first reason we can think of is the cost overruns. Cost overruns, ki paise khatam ho jate hain. Project complete nahi hota, usse pehle paise khatam ho jate hain. So this is one of the problems. So for this, to overcome this, we definitely need to budget our things properly. Okay, so that whatever projects we are investing into, we must have a proper, uh, you know, proper guidelines, a proper framework to invest upon any particular project. So we need to budget our things more properly. We need to budget things properly, so that overruns na ho pesoka. Second, there is optimum input-output ratio, jo hai, wo kam hai. Hai, what we, whatever input we are giving, we don't get the output mil rahe. So this is one of the reasons, again, why PSUs are underperforming in our country. The third could be, we need to implement labor laws. And the ministerial or departments ke jo coordination hota hai, wahan par bhi lag karti hai cheez, and definitely the implementation part of everything any uh, scheme or any scheme or any initiative or any project you talk about, this is something which we are hugely, highly lacking. Okay? Implementation is something which we have to do and then only we can think of or we can hope for a better result. So better execution is the need of the hour. Better implementation by all the stakeholders is the need of the 
are moving ahead just a second please yeah the next is recent examples which uh, are there to uh, uh, to which which enhance the performance recent examples to enhance the performance these are certain examples like for example pm gati shakti so much talked about this uh, it is it is mentioned in budget also so what it talks about it basically uh ye no no it was it was actually sorry it was uh, uh yes it was in budget but it was i guess it was announced on 75th independence day 75th independence day by our prime minister and it is basically a multimodal connectivity ye hai kya exactly ye ek digital platform hai for the information sharing among different different ministries and departments so this is for the ministries and departments a digital platform hai so that they can coordinate better so that they can share all the informations through using this digital platform and it also entails analytic decision making tools so that jo bhi project related informations hain ya uh, infrastructure projects hain unko better tarike se un pe decision liya ja sake timely implementation cheezon ka kiya ja sake apart from that that it also has this review periodic review and monitoring thing also so that whatever is happening we can monitor it we can have this review on it right through what through a gis gis platform gis is geographic information system all right so these are some of the examples jo hum cheeze implement karne ke liye we have already took these initiatives or these things okay up next we have what is the issue with nmp like i've told you that there are always a challenges associated with any kind of either technology or initiative or scheme we talked about we talk about there are always challenges or the issues related with it same are the issues related with nmp what are the issues first issue is that policy makers ke liye bahut important ho jata hai that they introspect they think upon the declining profit making government asset we initially need to think that why psus are underperforming in our country why the government assets are underperforming or why they are declining right why they are not making profit so we the policy makers need to really need to analyze really need to ponder upon this topic and come up with a better solution then we we should cycle of creating new asset and then monetizing the same if we'll keep doing it suppose we create project a theek okay? hai but we could not gain any profit somehow because of it theek okay? hai we will uh, either sell it or we give it to uh, private sector only we take some money out of it we give that money to b to the project b theek okay? hai suppose this suppose this is also not working we do the same we do uh, we uh, you know do the same what we did with a give money to see theek okay? hai so this will be basically a vicious trap so we need to think that what are we doing we are creating one project giving it on lease taking out some money investing it somewhere then maybe uh, probably giving it uh, the another project also on lease taking out money so this is a loss making uh, cycle right so we are not really gaining anything from it right so this is a vicious cycle and we are getting trapped into this so this needs to be rectified all right going by annual reports department of public enterprise there are 256 operational run central public sector undertaking jisme 1 million people employed hain jiska net profit bhi is uh, 93294 crores and out of these 96 have been conferred ratna status theek hai aur uh, in sab ye uh, 72 14 aur 10 jo respectively are the mini ratna navratna and the maharatnas respectively as india needs to invest 1.5 trillion uh, trillion on infrastructure development taki we have to because we have to achieve the dream of achieving of becoming 5 trillion economy by 2025 so the psu especially the public enterprises or the psu the public sector should be in focus right this all these problems should be rectified only then we can think of achieving a target of becoming becoming what becoming a 5 trillion economy okay 
I think the last part of it that what needs to be done to enhance the PSU performance, what needs to be done to promote our economy by the uh, by the public sectors only. Okay, yes. Private sectors are always helpful, but we also need to address the problems or the lacunas in the public sector. Okay, so economic survey maybe 2020 or 2021 ka jo hai. They also talk. It also talked about uh, revamping the corporate governance structure. So we need to do this. We need to uh, revamp or uh, enhance a. Uh, government corporate gov governance structure so that things could be more transparent things could, could be more accountable and more you know um, result oriented so that we can make them result oriented next what could be done is that department of public enterprise ne bhi ye report kiya hai that uh, revamping of performance monitoring system central public sector enterprise to make them more transparent objective forward looking it's 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 the same thing ठीक है व्हाट दे हैव रिपोर्टेड आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू और वी आल्सो नीड टू प्रोटेक्ट आर इंडस्ट्री फ्रॉम अनफेयर ट्रेड हाउ थ्रू अप्रोप्रिएट रेमिडियल मेजर्स इंक्लूडिंग द इंपोजिशन ऑफ एंटी डंपिंग ड्यूटी या फिर काउंटर वेलिंग ड्यूटी एंटी डंपिंग ड्यूटी आर बेसिकली दी टैरिफ्स दीज आर सम ऑफ द टैरिफ्स व्हिच आर पोज्ड बाय द डोमेस्टिक गवर्नमेंट ऑन द फॉरेन इंपोर्ट्स ताकि जो भी फॉरेन से कम प्राइस में हमारे डोमेस्टिक मार्केट से कम प्राइस में जो भी सामान आ रहा है उसका प्राइस जो है हमारे डोमेस्टिक मार्केट से कम ना हो दैट इज वाई वी द डोमेस्टिक गवर्नमेंट इम्पोज दिस एंटी डंपिंग ड्यूटी सो दैट आर ओन मार्केट आर डोमेस्टिक मार्केट और आर मैन्युफैक्चर कुड नॉट गेट नेगेटिवली हेम्पर्ड राइट ऑन द अनदर हैंड काउंटर वेलिंग ड्यूटी आर इम्पोज ऑन द सब्सिडाइज प्रोडक्ट्स राइट सो वी नीड टू स्टॉप दिज अनफेयर ट्रेड आई मीन वी नीड टू प्रोटेक्ट आर इंडस्ट्री फ्रॉम दी अनफेयर trades also by putting uh, uh, things like anti dumping duty and saving or protecting our manufacturers our own markets all right i think uh, yeah these were some of the remedies so at the end i would only like to say that the success of any plan comes after its proper implementation a better execution from all the stakeholders maintaining a balanced approach in all the sectors right same goes with this sector same goes with the stakeholders associated with this sector so we need to uh, uh, we, we we need to you know do this we need to really uh, do proper implementation of the things at a national level at all the levels actually the national level the state level and uh, the municipality level okay so this was about today's topic i hope it was clear to you thank you so much